Hey y'all, what's up? This is Jesse Boat, aka J Bone, and uh, that's right. Keep calm and follow me. Um, I encourage you to join me on YouTube and uh, subscribe to my channel so you can get the uh, notifications when I drop new videos. Um, I would also like to uh, introduce you to uh, a new venture of mine. I've got a new uh, community page on Facebook set up. The 19th hole, you can search it on YouTube, on uh, Facebook. Uh, just search Golf Clash the 19th hole and uh, just apply to join, answer a couple questions, and we'll get you hooked up. Uh, this is a community page that is geared toward uh, new and uh, ad advanced golfers. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we can make uh, create an environment that's friendly for the new players to ask questions, and uh, you know the old players to share the information and tips to uh, new and old alike to hopefully improve our games. Um, so please check that out. Uh, check out the the page statement and if it's something that you think that you agree with or like uh, please uh, stick around and uh, contribute to our community so what we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to go back over these holes real quickly and uh, I have played the I have played on my rookie account so I have all of the wins and uh, any extra little tips that I might have figured out during my quick um, rookie practice round so we got hole number one here. Um, off the tee box. Off the tee box, you're going to expect a wind like this. And uh, for me, it was 3.0 mi oh miles per hour. And most all these shots are going to be using the Marlin ball. So from that, you can uh, either adjust the wind or add wind. Um, so our first shot off the tee box, 3.0 oh miles per hour. And uh, I landed my shot right up in here, okay, and from there we had a wind blowing, a headwind blowing back at me, and it was at 3.3 .3 miles per hour, okay. So we had tailwind to start, and a headwind um, on our second shot. So we'll go ahead and move on to hole number two. Uh, this is going to be quicker than our last video because we're really just talking about the winds and basically anything that I might notice. Uh, hole number two, uh, off the tee box, we have a wind like this, 4.8. Um, I had the backbone and the the um, the viper. This is my lower uh, rookie account. I did find that taking this shot. I was running into issues uh, with the clubs changing on me uh, in between clubs. So either you have to aim your shot farther back here, which would require a much larger jump, uh, and in my opinion makes it a little bit more risky, or you can aim using your Viper, which is what I used, um, you can aim right in this area. And keep in mind, uh, my Viper is, let's see, what did I say? My Viper is a level 7, which is like 56 accuracy. So basically, 2 miles per hour per ring is what I judged. Um, so you want to aim it in here. Uh, you can use a little bit of like half a bar top spin, uh, some side spin to aim that shot towards the hole. Um, that is the route I would suggest using. And... Uh, you know, the other route is still there, it just might be a little bit more difficult um, than you prepared for. So, um, yeah, anyways, that is that hole. So, 4.8 miles per hour wind off the tee box. <clears throat> and we got hole number three. Okay. Hole number three, get this back here correctly. Uh, hole number three, off the tee box we've got a 2.8 miles per hour wind. 2.8, okay. And I landed my my second shot right about in there, okay. And from that next location, it was um, that wind, 5.1 miles per hour. Um, if you're using the extra mile uh, at a level five, it's about two and a quarter, 2.25 miles per hour per ring. 
and then if you use your big dog, uh, which at level, a level five big dog was 2.25 miles per hour as well. Um, you're really going to have a difficult time making that second shot onto the green unless you get fairly far up the fairway towards uh, you know, next to the edge of that rough. Um, for your second shot, you're going to be bouncing it in here, laying it in here, or trying to bounce it from there onto the green. And then for your third shot, from where that third dot is, you're looking at a wind like this with a 3.3 miles per hour. Okay? So we have three tailwinds on this hole. Next hole, we got hole number four, which is a par three. <coughs> um, using the Viper, I had the, uh, the backbone in and I found it to be in between clubs up on this first patch because uh, your wind is going to be Let's see, back blowing like this 4.7 miles per hour. So you have a, a headwind blowing from left to right on this hole. Um, using the, the backbone, which is at level 7, I found myself to be in between clubs trying to set up for this shot. So um, either adjusting the ball you're using or basically possibly the clubs could open that shot up for you. But with the marlin ball, I did find myself to be in between clubs. Um, I did just take the, uh, using my Viper, I aimed right there with some top spin, and I was able to get within five yards of the pin. So now we move on to hole number five. Alright, so off the tee, expect a win. Uh, left to right brief headwind, 3.6 miles per hour. Uh, my second shot, I landed it right up in here. Uh, you might want to make sure off the first tee box, uh, I had a level five extra mile, and I put one bar of backspin just to make sure I didn't roll through the fairway and that was just hitting it with uh, regular power. Um, my second shot was another headwind, and it was 4.1 miles per hour. Uh, my third shot onto the green, I did find myself in between clubs, and that was with the uh, the Saturn, which was level six Saturn, and a Thorn level two. I was unable to um, aim my my shot right at the edge of the green like I normally would, and uh, you know changing the ball uh, would pro possibly fix that. Um, I was I did have to take my shot over to here with back spin and right spin and curl and I was able to get fairly close to the hole still. But the, the direct shot straight at the hole with like a lot of backspin did not work for me with the Marlin ball. Changing the ball to like the Titan or something would probably change that and give me uh, open up that shot again. But if you're gonna play with the Marlin ball, uh, that shot will probably be most likely be in between clubs with you. And uh, you would end up having to overpower your shot um, to try that shot out. Hole number six, um, from the tee box, you're going to have the wind blowing like this. It was five miles per hour. Uh, that may make you think you want to try to jump that sand bunker. I watched a guy do it um, in my uh, hole, and he went into the bunker. If you plan on trying to uh, drop your ball still before the bunker, I had a level five extra mile, and I did put one and a half bars of backspin on my drive and I still ended up fairly close to the edge of the uh, the rough so uh, you might want to bump that back to two up to two uh, backspin just to be safe um, on that first shot so from the second shot I had uh, let's see 2.6 miles per hour and we had a wind blowing kind of like that. Um, I did use my big dog on this hole. And I jumped it from here and ended up right over in this section right there. From there I had a headwind and it was 
1.1 miles per hour. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to hole number seven. Uh, par three. I had my level seven Viper and I aimed it right about there. Um, I used 1.5 topspin and a little bit of left spin just to uh, guide it and line it up with the, uh, the hole. Um, I had my um, backbone with me, but my backbone, I would have had to aim it somewhere back in here to use the backbone. Um, so changing balls, once again, may allow you to use the backbone. Uh, but if you use the marlin, you will have to use your uh, wood, most likely, unless you might uh, use your goliath. Uh, but I like the Viper. The Viper is a pretty easy club to use. you got two miles per hour per wind for the adjustments, uh, and it gives you a little bit of uh, you know, spin as well. The, uh, the wind for this hole was 2.6 miles per hour. All right, so we move on to hole eight. Uh, we have a wind blowing this way, 2.9. Um, I landed my ball right up in here. And from that shot, I had a pretty, it was a pretty straight tailwind at the hole, uh, but it was 4.6 miles per hour. <clears throat> I used my backbone, uh, 1.25 miles per hour per ring. So I, I Aim basically three and a half bars on that shot, and uh, I, I just about put it in the hole. I had my my the ball guide is not that good on uh, that club yet, uh, so I kind of aimed a little bit short. So we move on to the last and final hole, which is hole nine. Um, I did put a Titan ball in on this hole just because of the left spin. And that's, you know, I think you really got to use a ball with some left spin on this hole. Um, I did use uh, three bars of, of top spin, or two and a half bars of top spin. And I almost put myself in the bunker. So I would uh, suggest maybe just one bar of top spin, uh, one and a half at the most of top spin. Uh, you know, compare that, you know. Couple that with your side spin and your left curl as well. With level five um, extra mile, I didn't have a lot of curl, but uh, I had enough to, to do what I needed to do. Um, so we had uh, 4.5 miles per hour wind on this first shot. And I landed my tee shot right up in there. From there, I had. 3.3 miles per hour. Let's see if I can. 3.3 miles per hour. Now, I had my Viper on this hole. Um, I didn't mean to have my Viper, but I'm glad that I did. Um, I was still able to aim the Viper, level 7 Viper, up in here with a little bit of overpower and with uh, top spin and left spin, uh, you just want the edge of your ball guide to be on the edge of the green when you're um, adding your top spin. And I kind of slightly turned my left spin towards the hole. Um, after you adjust for the wind, I had to overpower a little bit, but I was able to land on the green about four yards away from the hole. I mean, four feet away from the hole. So I was really happy with the shot I was able to make with the Viper. And that tells me that if I, t if I make the same drive and end up in the same spot with my big dog, I will be able to make that same shot without overpowering the shot. So that's good news for hole number nine in the rookie division. Um, once again, I encourage you to uh, check out my YouTube channel um, and uh, subscribe if you like the content. Uh, if you have any comments, please be Feel, feel free to comment if you have any suggestions to make the stream better, or if you like the stream, please comment on what holes help you the most. Um, and then also, please uh, check out the new Facebook page, Golf Clash, the 19th hole. 
Um, and we are just starting to build that community up. Hopefully it'll be a place you can come hang out, uh, pick up some good tips, ask questions, and learn some information about this game that we all are so addicted to. So anyways, uh, that's going to be all for today. Good luck on your qualifying rounds. Peace out. God bless.